Well, hello everyone, it's the Emma Gardener, and I just decided I'd come out here to do a very quick episode. I wanted to do just a really quick update on everything that's been growing um, because I was outside in the garden and uh, it's beautiful out. So um, I got Zoe on a leash and we're just taking a little walk, so I decided to bring you all along. So, as you can see, the mini orchard is starting to come to life here. I am very excited. Um, this is my Asian. Uh, this is my Asian pear, and I'm very, very excited for this. Um, it looks to be actually pushing a bud, um, and hopefully you can see that there. Uh, it looks to be pushing a bud or two, and so um, that's that is a good sign. This is a beautiful sight. This is the tree that I'm actually training. This is a Bartlett pear, and I am very excited. Uh, this was. The branch I trained last year, um, I had clipped off the I had clipped off the uh, the weight here because I actually have it over here now on to this side, and then I just use a fishing weight and I weight it down so that it's it's pretty it's pretty overburdened. But um, what this is basically stimulating is a full load of fruit, so um, it's basically training the branch into this shape so that when it gets fruit it's going to be stronger because um, the way that they were growing right here if I had not done that um, they would have been growing too too straight up and they would have been going at more of a 45 degree angle up here and if they would have gotten a lot of fruit they would have snapped so I've trained them and now you can see this is actually already knowing that that's how it's going to grow for the rest of its life so um, I'm really excited about that and also another awesome thing is that as you can see all the buds are facing up and that's a really great sign that you're going to have the branch come out and then growth is going to come up here instead of um, having a bunch of just random branches come down so it creates a good canopy um, which it, all around creates a healthier plant so uh, I'm just working on the left side now over here trying to get that one to to do well and then um, and then over here I also have these ones going off so all in all I think this is probably my healthiest tree in my orchard and um, it's got a lot of great angles for harvesting or for holding a lot of fruit a lettuce bed I can't remember if I did a video on this or not I don't think so um, but I basically have some beautiful beautiful lettuce here and the reason why I have them planted so close is because these are all leaf lettuces and the beauty about leaf lettuces is you can pack them very very close and then basically they they fill out so the rows so the rows will be all nice and filled it will be just a big old lettuce bed but then what you do is you just bring in the scissors and you just clip off the leaves and they grow back from the from the root so they're not actually like a head where you are harvest the whole head at once so I have a whole lot of that going on um, and that's growing beautifully I also have um, I think uh, yep I do have some mustard growing the mustard is sprouting um, and I do have some um, this is a uh, oak leaf lettuce here um, I do have I know I have a couple other varieties I know this over here is a, a red mustard now uh, it's a red giant mustard so that's cool, uh, but I have a couple other unique varieties in here that have not yet really shown a whole lot of signs of sprouting. Um, not sure why, maybe they're a little bit later. Um, my strawberries are doing awesome. I have um, it's just so many uh, beautiful strawberries starting to come up, which I'm very, very happy about because I, I did a video on these, I know, um, and they're coming up fantastic. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to get many strawberries this year, I have a feeling, because I just now planted them. But they are doing great for being, I think, what, like two weeks old. Look at this. If any of you can guess what this is or remember last year's garden, this is a kale that survived through one of the coldest winters on record. Yep, I did not plant this this year. It actually came back. This was the old plant, and it came back on all these side shoots here that the plant formed. So very cool. I hope that fl I hope that flowers because I definitely want to save seeds from this, because obviously anything that survives the coldest winter on record is going to be a very hardy variety. Um, all the other ones died. This is my goji berry, and it is so beautiful. I am very very pleased with how this is growing. I hope it flowers this year as well um, because it is it is stocky it is beautiful and um, and it survived the coldest winter on record so again amazing plant they come over here I do have um, the asparagus that I started 
um, in last episode. And also, this one, this is a spinach that survived the coldest winter on record. Came back and um, it's beautiful. Got a lot of great green leaves here, so I'm gonna eat this one. Mmm, very sweet. Um, I'm guessing because it survived the winter, all the sugars were condensed in the leaves. And uh, it's not green and it's not bitter at all, so it's awesome. I don't have anything around the outside of this bed. I plan on planting radishes here um, today. That's what I got on my list to do still. Um, but over here along the trellis, I have a whole ton of peas. These are the sweet, edible peas, uh, the, the pods and all. So it's not just the, the peas. It's actually the whole thing is edible. So we like throwing these in stir fries and on salads and stuff. So um, we have a whole ton of those. And um, got quite a few going on here. So what I want to do is show you something. A lot of you don't know that these are actually edible. See? They're very sweet. They have just a supercharged bean flavor. And um, so, you know, it goes to show you that after your beans or your peas are done, you can still eat the the pea shoots itself. It's great in salads. It's very sweet, and um, they just have a just a mm, oh man gosh. It's just it's like a it's like a green bean flavor. Now, if you ever had a garden fresh green bean, it just has that beautiful green bean flavor. But it's so much oh it's so much more intense. So it's awesome, and that's why whenever I go to thin my plants, I always take a little snack because. There's no way those were ever going to grow up that thick. So I'm going to thin a few more, have a little snack myself, um, and let the rest grow up along the trellis. That way they don't crawl themselves out. And then here, uh, this is my garlic bed. I have a uh, four by five here. And the four by five is my variety of garlic. Um, I've been growing it for about four years now. And it's it has not changed this variety. I don't even really know what variety it is. But I got it from the store. I loved the flavor. So I've been just growing it from the cloves by saving, you know, four or five cloves year after year and um, just growing those out. So these are the fourth generation of that and it's awesome. It's a great variety of hard neck garlic. And then this variety of soft neck garlic I actually got from my family chiropractor. He's a great guy, he watches my show. So um, Eric, if you're watching, this is, uh, this is your garlic here and it's growing so well. And this is a soft neck variety and I'm not even sure what variety it is but I do know it's a soft neck. It grows really well and it's got beautiful, beautiful cloves. So um, they got kind of a purple outside shell with a uh, brown clove. So it's really unique. Over here, I just have some more, some more strawberries. I do have a lot of strawberries because I'm integrating most of this garden here. Most of this garden that you see is actually going to be mostly perennials because of the fact I love that you plant them once and you can harvest year after year after that um, with very little maintenance. So. That's kind of what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to save obviously a few beds for my spring crops that aren't perennials, but um, yeah. So I'm definitely I'm definitely enjoying the uh, the transition. Um, oh, and I almost forgot this bed. This bed right here is the last bed I'm going to show because all the other beds don't really have much going on. This bed, um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's all spinach, a solid spinach bed. And I seeded all of this early spring, covered it with a leaf mulch. Um, see, it's got it's got this beautiful kind of shredded leaf mulch here from last fall and all throughout here I have thousands and thousands of seeds I just basically broadcasted the seed out I just took my hand just put it in there and just threw it out here just spread it, spreading it like that and then covered it up with a wet leaf mulch um, and they sprouted fantastically I mean they are just doing so well and they are growing and uh, I honestly have no complaints here so that's the garden there i hope you all enjoyed and hopefully you all have learned something in some way shape or form um that's my goal here out of my gardener is to at least let you take home one little bit of information um and yeah so stay tuned for wednesday i know cindy has something very cool planned for you and um until then i will talk to you all later and i will see you on friday all right take care guys bye